wins in three races. Croatia's Avisa Kostelic is in a world of his own in Super Combined and looking for the title today. This used to be his discipline. Not long ago, Bodie Miller was revered in the Super Combined. And the American star go back to the future today. Shot of the men's downhill in Sochi, Russia yesterday. A little bit overcast today for the men's super combined. And the racers getting set to take part in a discipline or disciplines that have been mashed together here. It will be for the final time on the World Cup circuit. Dan Dunleavy along with Brian Stemmel, a man who's very happy about that. And we won't get into all the details as to why. But first of all, before we get into the facts about where the Super Combined is going after today, which is nowhere, let's talk about the discipline, and, and maybe from there we can talk about uh, sure. why the racers don't like it. Yeah, well, it, it combines a run of downhill and a run of slalom later on in the afternoon. And it, I get it. People like it because it's cool to watch. You see the big stars, and you get to see them ski both downhill and slalom. But it's been around. Somebody asked me this morning, how long has Super Combined been around? I said, I don't know. I just want to forget about it because the racers don't like it and the coaches especially don't like it because they have to lug all their gear up and it's hard to train both downhill and slalom. So we're happy that it's going to be, this will be the last race ever that you're going to see of Super Combined. They'll still have the classics like Kitzbühel and Bangen where you race downhill Saturday, slalom Sunday, and just leave it at that. This, this thing didn't work for four years, I think. Well, with seven career combined victories, Ivica Kostelic will miss this discipline, whether you are happy it's gone or not, <laughs> and the rest of the racers, but uh, in, indeed the favorite today, and for good reason, for whatever reasons out there, uh, he has owned this discipline. He's, he's the only guy the that only likes one. it. He's one of the few guys that like it, and, and he's phenomenal at both of them. He's really emerged into an all-round skier. He was very good in slalom at the beginning of his career, and then just tore onto the circuit and has been great in downhill as well. And when he puts two good runs together in both the slalom and the downhill, he is just unbeatable, basically. Not great in downhill, but adequate. He gets through it. And, you know, he's, he finishes a little off the pace uh, when he does race the downhill. You can see 3.84 seconds back there in Vengen, but then he gets on this slalom hill and he rocks the house. And he is definitely one of the best in slalom. The other guys just can't touch him, really. So making sense of these two disciplines to really add up the World Cup points, which is why he's loving it. You take a look at the first place in Kispiel and Bengen, and also the other first place finishes uh, in the slalom with Bengen and Beaver Creek, or the North American stop there for Evita as well. So leading the overall standings uh, with that discipline. And let's talk about Bayat Foy. It's a great day yesterday, 25th birthday, winning the downhill here in Sochi. Yeah, celebrated it in style. and. He just had a terrific run, very aggressive and solid. This course was sheer ice, really difficult, huge bumps. One down at the bottom, 60 meters the guys were flying in the air. And he is emerging as the new Swiss star. D.D. Kush is retiring at the end of the year. But the Swiss fans have really taken a shining to Bayat Voigt because, man, he's just been all over the podium this season and uh, continuing where he left off at the end of last year. Well, great for the sport. You see the young up-and-comers getting it done there. You see with three first-place finishes, four times the number two man on the podium and a couple of times finishing third as uh, Bayat Voigt is a name to talk about. For the Canadians yesterday, it was... Ben Thompson, who is the man to talk about, and you mentioned that you were going to pick outside the box uh, yesterday, and that was a good choice to make. Yeah, he skied a terrific run, best run of his career, and he finished second, and it was just uh, an incredible day for them. They're not going to be racing today. I don't know if it has anything to do with the celebrations last night or what, but they just don't train much slalom. Eric Gay, uh, Ben Thompson, and Jan Hudek, they don't train any, and getting in that starting gate, putting your poles over the wand and slalom is almost more terrifying than it is in downhill if you haven't trained slalom at all, and that's why we're not going to see any Canadians in the event today. All right, no Canadians, but we do expect a lot of excitement on the hill with this, the final men's super combined on the World Cup circuit, and again, back in Sochi, Russia, as we take a look, I mentioned off the top, uh, beautiful sunshine yesterday, although it was a little flat light at the top of the course, and that adjusted throughout the day, but pretty much flat light from top to bottom. We'll see if that changes as the race goes on. And let's begin with Andreas Romar, Finnish racer, gets our coverage started today. You guys are not terribly impressed with this course designed by Bernard Brucey, and I called him an Austrian yesterday. Obviously, Bernard Brucey is Swiss. For everybody who 
told me on Twitter that I was, I was wrong. My bad, I apologize. And uh, yeah, Bernard Rusi, great course designer. And they, they just like to see a different set. The hill's beautiful, great terrain. This is where it really gets into a downhill down here, where the guys can finally get in their tuck after being rattled around for the top 40 or 45 seconds. But they will make some changes for the Olympics. And, Hey, all of the athletes have to race it, so they better start liking it now if they want a chance at that gold medal. Skiing and golfing, the two sports where the athletes who take part can come in with critiques on courses and quite often affect change. Yeah, basically the pin placements are just in the wrong spot on this hill. Now you have a chance to breathe in here. This course is a little bit shorter than yesterday for the combined. Here's the big... Jump at the bottom. Whoa, smack way outside the blue dye. That blue dye is there just for some perspective. Light's very flat today. Doesn't matter if you go outside, you just have to go between those red gates. Don't worry about where you are compared to that blue dye. Just let them go down here. About 15 seconds shorter than yesterday's run. That big air at the end of the run, as we saw yesterday in the downhill. And Romar with the first numbers up on the board. Go back to the top of the mountain. Our first look at the Austrian, Max Franz. Yeah, he's the, uh, if you recognize the name Franz, the cousin of Werner Franz. Werner Franz raced for the Austrians. He had 19 podiums in his career, but only two wins, and he was one of the guys who was the most fun on the circuit. Really great, fun loving guy, and passed on his skill and technique down to his cousin. Max was 15th last weekend in Chamonix. He had a bit of a crash second training run, said he didn't hurt himself all that much, scared himself a little bit because it was so steep and icy up top where he fell, he just didn't stop sliding and just continued tumbling down the hill because of the severity of the slope. There's your new leader early on, of course, just the number two racer down, and how's this for a point of view? And Sochi, find it, find it on Sportsnet. day for downhill racing yesterday. We are very early into our first portion is Bodie Miller. You mentioned the opening. Used to be a beast at this discipline and so far with this first run again early in the day, putting up some pretty good numbers. Well, he's been fabulous in downhill. It's a slalom he really hasn't figured out. He just can't seem to finish a slalom run, but watch him in the downhill. Whoa! Bent out of shape over the last bump. Highly critical of the course all week, but this looks like a good run from Bodie Miller. And the 34-year-old with the best time so far. He was only two hundreds off the podium yesterday, finishing fourth. So, even though he doesn't like it, he's still racking up some good numbers. Here's someone who's looking for a better day than he had in Chamonix in this discipline, and that's Dominic Perry. He is one big dude. Look at the size of men. Take that huge six foot three, 225 pound frame down this course. He is going to be rocking down here at the bottom. Doesn't matter if he's got the leg strength. Look at the high stable tuck he's got going. Whoa, man. Not one place you want to fall. He has a high, stable tuck, but he's still killing it in the time. Almost half a second up. If he carries that through in the last portion, he does. Grab the lead. The downhill portion of this men's super combined. He could have tucked a little lower, get that chest onto your knees, but it still worked for him. 27-year-old Frenchman, Adrian Tail on course. Great yesterday, 
third in the downhill, matched the best result of his season. So he likes this course. Well, there's a nice turn. Bust through that gate just like a GS turn. He'll be doing that a little bit later on in the slalom. Yesterday we had racers coming in and out of the sun into some flat light, and now we see a little bit of sunshine here after some flat light for the most part to start the race. Guys were complaining yesterday that they really haven't had these conditions all season long. It's iced over, but what's happening now, it's all breaking up. The ice is breaking away, making it really bumpy and challenging. And yet another new lead time, so more speed is being found. This time by the seventh season member of the tour and fail now back to the top of the mountain. This, of course, is the man to watch today, Kostelic, 32 years of age. Whoa, man, getting really late. That's where a lot of the guys who were missing gates earlier on in the week in training. That's a great shot. Look at that. Really gives you an idea of that hill. Too many turns down there. Wow, a little rough through that section. Guys would just like to see those gates spread out a little bit further and not have as many turns. Then it'll add a little bit more excitement, a little more speed, which is what downhill's all about. And sometimes he beats the Kozlich. Has a tough time finding that speed in the downhill, but this is not a bad interval, only half a second back. All he's trying to do now is stay within touch of these guys because he knows he's so good in the slalom, which is coming up a little bit later, that he can probably beat some of these guys by one, two, maybe even three seconds. So he just has to manage his way down safely. See what he's got. Resting up for the afternoon. Check out the latest interval for Kostelich. more time, so we've got a bit of air to handle here at the bottom of the course. Didn't take much air over that bump. That tells me he's going a lot slower than everybody else. We'll see what this big one says for him. Nice and smooth. That's it. Sure doesn't look like he's going 132. Sounds a lot smoother, you're right, Brian, as Kostelich comes across the line. If he made up some time at the bottom of the course for a second back. Look at this ski just flap around in this section of the course. Talked about that ice and how it's breaking up. Man, the flex in that ski is unbelievable. Almost caught his edge there, but this is what he does so nicely. Just gets those knees going into the turn perfectly, rolls on those edges. And then, man, he just rails right around that turn beautifully. Nice stuff from Kostelich. Even though he's a little back, that's not too bad for him. There's a look at the leaderboard. Again, we are in the downhill portion of the men's super combined. Still plenty of skiers to come in Sochi, Russia. Crowd gathers to the bottom of the hill. Spindle, amongst others, still to come when we return on Rogers Sportsnet. Earlier today, the women racing in the giant slalom in Andorra. Get a look at Marie Michelle Gagnon. Yeah, she had a great run today, ninth after the first run, came down second at this point. She would end up seventh. It's her first time racing here in Andorra, and man, was it windy, but it didn't bother Tessa Worley. Her second victory of the season, she won an earlier giant slalom in Transcagora, and They've had a fun time in Andorra, which is which borders Spain and France. And if you've ever been to Spain before, you know they like to have a good time there. And celebrating was Tessa Worley. And there you see down at seventh with Marie Michelle Gagnon's finish and two other Canadians racing today. One other finish for the Canadian squad in Andorra. We come back now to Sochi. Axel Dunn Spindon, beginning with a men's super combined, the downhill portion. 
Just before the break, we showed a shot of the stands, people in the finish. Not very many people in the stands today because there's so much security around that they just haven't allowed people to come up to the hill. And if you go on AxelWoodSpindal.com, you'll see what I mean. There's a dude standing right at the start with a sniper rifle. Because it borders on Georgia, it's very close, and they're worried about people coming in. And he said, it's unbelievable. I've never seen guys with AK-47 standing at the start of a down, of course, before. But a pretty cool shot. He gives you some inside stuff on that blog and the pictures that he shows on there. Another aspect of the preparation for 2014. We're ready for it. Don't spend all yesterday, just seems to be off balance a little bit. Was sick earlier on in the season, really just hasn't regained his form from the beginning of the year. It's only 13th yesterday, one and a half seconds back, and eight tenths back now. He might be even further by the time we get to the finish, maybe 1.5 again. Nice shot coming through the finish. Got the time across the line to see if someone's paid up or wasn't at the bottom, but some real nice air there at the last jump. Well, and this is what happens when the ice breaks up. You can see his foot just getting buried in one little rut. And what happens is it creates these little ruts as you go down. If you don't get on that outside ski early, what happens? He drifts a little bit too wide into the turn. So he's carrying a wider line, traveling a little bit further. He wants to be on that inside line. But because he's getting bounced around by those ruts that have been created by the other racers, it's tough to get there. Well, here's yesterday's birthday boy. Bay at points. 25 years of age coming off the downhill victory yesterday. I don't know if the racers are just used to it from racing yesterday. They don't look like they're getting tossed around quite as much as they had that look yesterday in the downhill. Well, this is, whoa, there he goes. He just jinxed them. As soon as I totally out of balance there. <laughs> Yeah, he's just, you know, when you're brimming with confidence, it's easy to ski in perfect balance, and it, he makes it look easy, and trust me, he is trying his hardest out there to be perfect, and it's not that easy of a task. This is the only guy that can chase down Kostelich for the super combined title. Boyd stands in second, only 16 points behind Kostelich, and man... He said, some people yesterday are getting a little bit nervous because I'm chasing him down in the overall as well. It was a good message to send to Costa Lynch that I'm hunting him down for the overall. Whoa, a huge flight. My goodness. That's the biggest we've seen all weekend. And look at the speed. Bearing that down into the last bit of air and across the finish line. The challenge is indeed on, at least in this downhill portion. Aon Foyts, thinking 2014 can't come fast enough for him. He said he wished it was next year, the Olympics. He said that earlier. Yeah. Now it's Carlo Yanka, 25 years of age. particular part of the course. Oh yeah, you just drop off. You carry so much speed out of that bank turn. When it drops away, you just pick up a whole bunch of speed, but that's why they've set so many turns in the course through that midsection to try and slow these guys down before the huge bumps at the bottom. Decade ago, first fist race for Paolo Yak at the age of 15 in December 2001. Uh, I look at Bad Foyts and it's kind of like Carlo Yanka burst onto the scene did Yanka and won the overall title. And now he's fallen off the pace a little bit, but Bad Foyts is picking up the slack and seems to be hunting down the overall as well. 
fifth place to this point after the downhill portion, but still, Ryan, you mentioned that these guys still carry some great speed down the mountain, and there you see with Bayak Boyce right now holding the best time in the downhill portion of the men's super combined. The slalom to come as we continue with our coverage of the World Cup here on Rogers Sports. shook his head and his reaction at the bottom of the course. Oh, Benjamin Reich up top. I don't even have to say anything. You will see the difference between Sander and Benjamin Reich. Maybe not. It looks like he's struggling up top. Very round set. Turns... Is that a lot like the downhill, maybe a little bit too wide across the hill, and guys aren't creating a lot of speed at the top. Normally you see the slums are so fast. Now he's picking up speed through that four-gate flush. He hasn't been great all season with Matt's. Killing it at the interval almost two and a half seconds up. Championship medal back in the water. Silver in the slot, pushing into the finish line. And well, there's your difference. <laughs> Over four seconds. Exacto! Exacto! Cheering him to go, 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 not die, 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 but he is dead on this course today. Just gets that hand a little bit too low. Right here, that right hand's too low. What happens? It takes pressure off your outside ski, and then you slip a little bit too far down the track, and uh, you can see this is the way you're supposed to go around this hairpin that's set vertically down the hill. But he was way off balance at the beginning, just couldn't make his way through that gate the proper direction. We missed that red gate totally. Pretty quiet moments out of the gate there for Sylvain. Zerbring. Did any one specialist have an advantage in the super combined, a downhiller have an advantage over a slalom steer or vice versa? You would think that the uh, the downhillers have more of an advantage because the slalom hill is a lot shorter, but the reality is you can be an average downhiller and be closer in the time to the leader than you are in slalom because slalom is just so tough. It's difficult because you have to train it constantly, and that's what that's why Vitsa Kostelic is so good. His father who coaches him, Ante Kostelic, Drove he and his sister into the ground with training slalom gates. And Zubrigan just doesn't have that experience in slalom. That's why he's 1.34 back at Benjamin Wright. Maybe you ain't go on course. This will be interesting as well. The Olympic gold medalist in Vancouver in the downhill. 
see what he's got here in this slalom. Pretty good technique, actually. He's, okay. Whoa, no, hang on. A great shot. Really, he's got it going now. Oh, no. Mixed again. Sometimes in slalom, when you're off balance by a few degrees here and there, this is what happens. And it happens so quickly. Went bust right out of that hairpin, and that was it for Defago. Pounding, too. You can see the knee takes when that kind of pressure is applied when you lose your edge. And one ski like that, Alexis. Oh! Hands are rolling, of course, and not for long. Guys are just having a miserable time up top. This first 10 or 15 gates have been brutal. There he is, just gets that ski on the wrong side of the gate, hooked his tip, and that means he will be disqualified if he doesn't stop, and he has to stop. We've seen a lot of controversy this year with Marcel Herscher in the slalom. He said he straddled a gate in Zagreb, Croatia, and nobody caught it. it allowed him to go on and claim that victory. Oscillate warming up. Well, here's a flashback in Roman Bauman, Begging Switzerland. Yeah, the super combined. He skied really well in the downhill and not known as a great slalom skier, but was surprised more than anybody else that he was standing in that winner's circle and it wasn't Ivisa Kostelic. Top the hill of Sochi, Russia. Again, the site for the 2014 Winter Olympic Games and this first World Cup weekend. And uh, leaving along with Brian Stettel. First off, Peter Hoffer set to go in the slalom portion. That's a nice skiing up top. Well done. Coming back from that fall yesterday, remember if you watched yesterday, he came flying into a turn about 110 kilometers an hour and his ski popped off and he pulled a great recovery out didn't actually go down just managed to keep his balance on one foot and came to a safe stop gives you a nice perspective of the speed that they do carry in slalom when they get it going and interhopper has got it going half a second up so he's really attacking this course <laughs> Top carries it all the way down to the bottom and just lost enough to fall to second. Now, as we look to Kostelich in our flashback. On a bluebird day in Vengen, he skied very well in the downhill, nice and smooth, and this is where he really picks it up on the tough hill in Vengen in the slalom. And He's just so good and slow. We'll have to see how far he can gain an advantage on the rest of the guys. If he makes it. He puts it together with this run. Win would guarantee him the title.
is so well balanced, so smooth. Picking up time now, almost two oh, over two seconds up. Some really great skiing from Ibiza Kostelich. This is beautiful to watch. Finally, somebody who's challenged this course. This is the best in the world. That's how it's done, folks. Oh, yeah. Nice his way across the line. There you see, well over two second lead. And will that be enough to claim the title? The discipline that Brian will miss when it's long gone. I think so, that's a pretty large margin. And Marsegli has his work cut out for him here. He's ahead by a quarter of a second, or just under a quarter of a second, of Ibiza Kostelich in the downhill. That's the margin that he has to play with now, but he's now lost that and 7400s more. Super combined in his career, so that's what it takes now here to get it done. I can't wait for the Olympics in 2014. The guys have really raved about the area here and how beautiful it will be. And when these stands are packed and we'll see people lined up at the side of the course, it's going to be one spectacular event. Marsegli, yeah, will hopefully be there representing Italy, but what a bad run for him in the slalom. He's more of a downhill skier. Costalich. I heard him say something's wrong with my knee. Wow. Thierry Andrews on course. Norwegian. What a bad run for a sore knee. Oh, good smokes. Yandrin's a great giant slalom skier, super G skier. He said after the super combined and Shannon, I'm really going to have to work on my slalom if I want to figure this event out. It will happen for the Olympic Games in a couple of years, so he'll have two years to work on that, but not before he takes a vacation in the Balkans this week to recharge the batteries for the rest of the season. Yansford well back. Oh, shaking your hand. There, Axel moves Findon. The downhillers just have so much of a disadvantage compared to the slalom skiers. Oh, they smoke Svindon. Lost almost a second up top. Doesn't look too bad, but just an impossible event to ski if you don't train it every single day. I'm evident of that. Slipping away. Legs are supposed to be burning this portion of the course, and there's the tide roll back. Oh, yeah, these guys are going to be exhausted. Skiing a two-minute downhill, um, over three kilometers long, and then having to do this as well, plus carrying all your gear. They need a vacation after this. Back up time. In behind Blondine, side slipping, side slipping the course, trying to smooth it out for the rest of the racers. Terrific camera angle there. I really love that shot. Almost like the drone that we saw in Bengen and Garmisch a couple of weeks ago, hovering over the athletes as they're making their way down. to the line. Time again, just kept slipping away down the bottom portion of the course, and I go back to your comments, Brian.
find that uh, these guys, you're right, the legs are just expiring on them probably by the end of this race. And if, if your sentiments are probably shared by many of the skiers, they're just trying to get through this thing. Without suffering an injury, like we hope that Kostovich didn't suffer to any great degree. We saw him limping earlier if he just joined us after his great run. Hartwell Yenega bringing the knee on back. From back to the 80s. Level old school. He's looking pretty good, actually. The guy has been struggling all season. Well documented heart surgery last year that didn't seem to hamper him whatsoever, but this year just really hasn't found his form. Did that to correct a, an arrhythmia, arrhythmia that he had. Just hasn't figured it out this season, man. Almost three seconds back, so the line green flashback didn't help him there, but uh, Evita Kostelic, the leader. 26 skiers, slalom portion of the men's super combined in Sochi, Russia. Final time, the men's super combined will be run, and there you see the facial expression on Kostelich. Hope that he's okay. We'll be back with more slow. Flashback to January 15 of 2010 in Bodie Miller, Megan, Switzerland. Smoked the downhill run, and Unlike Bodie Miller of late, managed to make his way down the slalom the whole way down because lately he hasn't finished many slalom runs and he was a pretty happy guy after that. We'll see what he can do here today. He very conservatively. Boy, he got hurt as well. Grimacing like Kostelich was. Favoring his right leg, perhaps, or just the way it finished. Hard to tell. Bumbo to the start very gingerly. He grits his teeth, and something's gone wrong with Bodie Miller. Normally, you see him attack these slaloms and go out, not ski conservatively like we just saw. Lifting that left leg up in the air. <laughs> Oh, not a good sign from the 34-year-old. Dominic Perry. He can barely squeeze out of that start. Oh, man, he's down, too. Same fate he suffered in Chamonix a week ago. Such a big guy, and it's hard to get that big frame, those fast twitch mi fi fiber muscles firing on all cylinders. <laughs> Just leans in, goes down in the side. Classic mistake we normally see in giant slalom, not slalom too much. So it's been a rough go for the last couple out of the gate. Good goal to see how Teo fares here at the top. Doesn't look all that pretty either, does he? Holy smokes. 1.22 second advantage on Kosalich at the start, and he has kissed that goodbye already. He's really going to have his work cut out for him down here if he wants to finish on the podium like he did in Chamonix. He's making too many turns going through that four gate flush. Want to pin it straight through there, and he is turning way too much and losing more time because of that. Whoa, hey, no. Really it there. <laughs> That's not one that he's going to show his kids on his highlight reel in about 20 years. Oh, boy, the last three have not been highlight reels. A little wide on that turn, and then look at him. Wow, ouch. Oh, and they can feel it, too. All right, one more to go, and wouldn't it be a great weekend capped off if Bayat Bayat Boyce put together a real rock and roll run here. Wrap up this men's super combined. 
at two podiums in Chamonix, a win yesterday, and he is celebrating his birthday like mad the last little while. He's doing so well. Hanging on, barely still got four tenths of a second lead, but he's lost that second advantage that he has. Let's see what this next interval says. Oh, three tenths back now, but he's really going for it here. And points coming down to the finish. And he finds a little push. He certainly will not be the winner here, but he will be in second place. But you can see that time well back of the winning time put together by Kostelich today here in Sochi. They wrap up this men's World Cup weekend. Beats Kostelich on the limp a little bit after that victory. Bad points with a good run today, just not enough speed as Brian mentioned on that slalom. Well, Kostelich was unbelievable in the slalom. Points at 1.5 second advantage on Kostelich in the downhill portion, and Kostelich was just oh so good in the slalom. Wins by 1.16, just destroyed the field, probably could have taken it a little bit easier, but when you have the competitive determination that Ivica Kostelich has, you sure just don't want to hold back and look at him limp now. My goodness, that's not good news for Ivica Kostelich. Using those poles like crutches to get on that top step. Let's take a look at the men's super combined current standings. As Kostelich wins it with his 336 points off the victory today, bad points. Pushed him as best he could. Well, I guess really did give him a pretty good push at the end of the day. And a look at the overall standings. There's Kostelich at top of the standings in Bayette Point. So very familiar 1-2. And Eric A, top Canadian in 15th place. As we wrap it up here looking at this race today. And for Kostelich, I guess the, the real concern now is, yes, he's, he's won the discipline that you love so much and that will be... <laughs> Uh, not returning next year, if you're just joining us. Last time we'll see the men's super combined in the World Cup circuit. Uh, but the limp at the end, and, and for a discipline that maybe not a race, not a lot of racers like, it's exactly what you fear, isn't it? You just want to finish this thing clean. Right, you don't want to be injured. And, uh, and Kostelich has been injured a lot in his career. I'm a little nervous for him right now. He's had successive knee surgeries. The last one just, just in May of last year. So he's always had problems with his knees, but... You know, I, man, I'm, I'm really worried about him because he has had those problems. He is leading the overall, just took home the, uh, the globe and the super combined. But this is a guy who wants that overall title more than anything. He doesn't want to be injured for the rest of the season. So we'll see how that injury progresses. Yeah, and just no, Kostelich should not give any interviews after the race. So it's bad enough that he felt and his handlers that he had to be taken to hospital right away to have that knee looked at. Well, Bayat Foyts has uh, certainly been a young star on the rise, and uh, he's pushing as best he can, but uh, it's been a great season for him, finding the podium now into double digits. He's been amazing the last little while, winning that race yesterday on his birthday. How sweet was that? Such a great day for him. And also, uh, chasing Ivica Kostelich down in the overall now. If Kostelich is out, this just opens the door wide open for Bayat Foyts to take home uh, an overall title, which is, to me, completely unheard of because this guy was nowhere on the scene the last couple of years because knee injuries. Now he's right at the top of his game and hunting down, he beats a cost lift like crazy. Tenth podium of the year. Quick thought on Sochi down to the weekend. This coming on for the men. The women will be here next weekend. Uh, I love it. I think it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see Downhill, of course. Uh, maybe not so much to like about the Super Combine, but at the end of the day, it was an interesting run nonetheless. For Brian Stemmel and the entire crew, I'm Dan Dunleavy. Thanks so much for joining us in our coverage of the World Cup here on Sportsnet.